Good morning, brethren. Good morning. It's so nice to be in the house of the Lord. Well, today we have a what we have to say. We are fall, we are falling back. The message from last week is going to be done today. But before we do so, let us join in prayer and ask a blessing from the Lord. Father, we come before you thankful that you have given us this opportunity to call upon you for guidance in the midst of all that is taking place. We ask you, dear Lord, to direct what we say here this morning and help us to always remember that it is because of your love and your mercy that we can say today, thank you, Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Well, brethren, we know that uh, yesterday, congregation attended a sheep sharing festival. And today, I think we will be a little enlightened in a spiritual direction. And the title that I selected today is called, I am the Good Shepherd. I will take scriptures from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Now, in John's Gospel, we will find his peculiar style consists of repetition of words and sentences, which serves to underline the thought that he endeavors to communicate. A double mention means divine emphasis. And we have an example in, in the 11th verse of chapter 10. Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now, we have been prepared for the conception of Jesus as shepherd in Psalms 23, Isaiah 40 verses 11, Ezekiel 34, 16, 23, and chapter 37, 23. You know, the first people to receive the announcement of Jesus' birth were lowly shepherds, which was fitting to see that one born in the manger would feel his flock like a shepherd. As we look around the world today, we will find plenty of people, movements, organizations, programs, and leaders, and other voices that claim to know who Jesus is, and that we should follow their examples of teachings if we consider ourselves children of God. But we have to be careful. We have to discern who is trustworthy and who are not. The only way to tell a spot or to spot a counterfeit hundred dollar bill, we have to know what distinguishes a real one. And that's what we are given today in our text. When it comes to knowing the difference between the good shepherd of the flock and the counterfeit one that masquerades around as the good shepherd, this subject is deep to be contained in some rational or logical argument because reality goes farther. What we can verify by our own reasoning and power is trivial. So Jesus comes to us with an image of a metaphor as a way to penetrate deeper 
than mere words can explain. But in order to receive what the Lord is telling us, we must first begin from a place of faith and trust that he is the one who is in a position to tell us who the good shepherd is. We must also trust that what he is saying is not further propaganda that serves for some of the means. He is not only telling us and giving us a picture of who he is, but that he himself is the embodiment and living proof. He doesn't just talk the talk, but he walks the walk. Brethren, let's begin with the first verse of John 10, that is verse 11, and see the picture the Lord is going to give us. In verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, Jesus likens himself to a shepherd. Now, this metaphor is right with meaning, especially considering God's history with Israel. It's not the first time this image has been invoked. God has already declared himself as the shepherd of his people recorded in various scriptures. For example, Psalm 23, Ezekiel 34. So why does Jesus go further in saying that he is the shepherd as these other scriptures already recorded. Why are we given the description of good? Pay attention to that word good. First, this sets up a distinction that must be considered when identifying a true shepherd from a counterfeit one. Now notice the adjective good, which can mean right, proper, honorable, and beautiful. It alerts us to the fact that there can be bad, wrong, improper, dishonorable, and downright ugly shepherds that parades around as angels of light. We must discern the difference, and Jesus goes further to help us discern what actions that will accompany a good shepherd. Brethren, a good shepherd has actions to prove. And that action is described as one who lays down his life for the sheep. We will notice in these eight verses that reference to laying down one's own life appears five times. And this gives us a clue as in a major distinction between what constitutes a good shepherd and what does not. Secondly, by including the adjective good, Jesus is building our trust in him and the Father who sent him. We don't want to put our trust in any old shepherd. We need to know that he is trustworthy, that he is indeed good. And we don't want to follow a shepherd who is good only in name. A self-proclaimed label is worthless. I could tell you I'm an angel of light. Brethren, the label must match the reality it indicates. Jesus will now go further to describe in more detail 
or what we can expect from a counterfeit shepherd and to help us discern where we are to place our trust. Verse 12 and 13 says, He who is a hired hand are not a shepherd. Who does not own the sheep? Sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Now Jesus is not stretching the metaphor further than the Old Testament scriptures have already done. Throughout the biblical records, we find many images of shepherds that did not live up to the description of good. For example, in Isaiah 56, 11, Jeremiah 56, that is 50 and 6 verse, Ezekiel 34 verse 8. You can read that at your leisure. Now, they are not concerned for the health of the sheep or their safety. In short, they don't love the sheep. They love their own power and control over the sheep is expressed with the harshness and violence they treat sheep. Brethren, Jesus is not saying something new here. He knows we all need to be reminded that not all shepherds are good. Not all who come explaining or complaining to protect and save us are trustworthy. In his metaphor of he being the good shepherd means protecting the sheep. Jesus uses a contrast between, he uses a contrast twice that designates a true shepherd from fake by comparing a hired hand to a shepherd that actually belongs that a shepherd that actually belongs to and that Comparison brings to mind that hired hands are only in it for their livelihood. As soon as their livelihood is in jeopardy, not to mention their lives, they can be counted on the head for the hills. Now this contrast zeroes in on the fact that the good shepherd cares more for the sheep than himself, and he would lay his life down for the sheep. We can also see another contrast here between shepherd and hired hands, who sees his relationship with the sheep as a contract that can be made not and void once the conditions change. On the other hand, the good shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep is clear is a clear presentation of the covenant god made and committed himself for the good of his people even at a great cost of himself it also goes further hinting towards the distinction between a relationship of works versus a relationship of grace. Let us look a little further and see what direction Jesus is taking us in this metaphor. In verses 14 to 16, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must also bring them, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. It appears that Jesus is more concerned to use this metaphor to tell us who he is than who the hired hands are. Notice he again states that he is the good shepherd and follows up with the claim that the shepherd knows his sheep and those sheep knows him. And the manner of this knowing between shepherd and sheep is comparable to the way the father knows the son. And the son knows the father, especially when we take it into account Jesus' words in John 10, 38. He says, the father is in me and I am in the father. That's some kind of serious knowing, brethren. And what do we make from this saying? By letting the metaphor take us beyond some literal relationship between sheep and shepherd, we are able to take Jesus' words about knowing as belonging to his claim of being the good shepherd. It is possible that what Jesus wants us to see is what qualifies him as the good shepherd. Or is it that he is the one who has enabled us to know the Father with the same kind of knowing that the Son has of the Father? Jesus is also the good shepherd in that he knows us as one of the sheep and not as a hired hand. After all, it is the shepherd who lays down his life that can identify the sheep who has been snatched by the wolf. Jesus is speaking much deeper about what good he brings to the sheep in laying down his life than some literal protection from death. He is going beyond saving the life of the sheep. It is the death of the good shepherd that has brought the sheep into the fold of life and love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, as Christ indicates, he is bringing other sheep into the fold as well. And this is where we come full circle with our discussion about knowing the love of the Father. Now let's wrap up with the last two verses, 17 and 18. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. How interrelated Jesus and his father Ah, in Jesus laying down his life for the sheep, they are both operating out of the same love. Jesus is showing us the love of the Father. We are to see that the Father loves us the same way as he loves the Son. And the Son is loving us by the authority of the Father's love. 
There's no difference between the Father's love for us and the love we see in Jesus. The good shepherd who lays down his life for us. That love seeks to bring us into an intimate relationship of knowing the Father through his Son by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what Jesus, this is what gives Jesus the distinction between the Good Shepherd. Our greatest good is brought into a relationship with the Father. Where we know Him and where we are known by Him. Now, in closing, John writes this as a description as a description of eternal life. That they know you and the only true God and Jesus whom you love have sent me. Jesus also mentions in the closing verse that he not only lays down his life, but that he also may take it up again. And with that statement, we are reminded of what we are celebrating during the seasons of resurrection. Our good shepherd is risen and he is still shepherding you and me. Brethren, we are to know him and his father more and he is continuing to love us with the very love the Father has for him. So we too can come to rest in assurance of knowing what the love of the Father and the love of the Son is and learn to trust our Good Shepherd who leads us to know the Father the same way as he does. Brethren, we could truly say like David, now that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'd like to just end with a little prayer. Father, we thank you so much for opening our minds, help us to be teachable, and help us, dear Lord, to always put you first, put you as Omega and put you as Alpha. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this privilege to speak in public. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.